All right, guys, I know it's late, so why don't we get started? Uh, we got a couple of guys up here that uh, I think everybody wants to talk to. You know, as we prepare for the 69th running of the Daytona 200, we have with us right now Danny Eslick, your pole position winner by two thousandths of a second. Uh, this is a day of uh, small margins, and uh, here's another example of that, the terrific racing. Uh, and it's Geico Power Sports, Richie Morris Racing, Suzuki. Uh, and also with us, Tommy Aquino, the Team Graves, Yamaha, he ended up in T3. Uh, Tommy, you jumped up. You were a little bit uh, down on the charts uh, for most of the early part of the session, and then uh, you pulled out a good lap. What was the progression like as the session started and you became a little more familiar with the lighting and the track conditions? How did that work for you? Uh, first off, I just wanted to look at the track, see how it was compared to the morning. And um, it was, had a lot more grip than the morning, for sure. And then. Um, I just worked my way up. Uh, I was alone, even though there was so many people out there. I, I was just alone the whole time. I think I got one draft, and it wasn't really my hot lap. And uh, I just worked my way up, ran off the track once and on a hot lap, and just took it easy and went out for the next hot lap. I just took it as lap by lap, like one flying lap, maybe like a, a cool down lap, check out my lines, and then another flying lap. And uh, one of the laps, I just got it perfect. Well, almost. <laughs> well, close enough. At, at that point, when you were kind of did one lap and then a, a slow down lap, were you looking for somebody to hook up with? Uh, no, not really, because it's, it's really rare to uh, get somebody that you can get somebody perfect to draft off of. So I was just spacing myself out, actually. Well, that's an excellent job. Uh, right now, we've also been joined uh, uh, with Team Graves, Yamaha. Josh Heron, uh, Josh also, you kind of ran towards the front during the session and uh, as things progressed, you kind of slipped back a little bit. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your night in terms of the track conditions and if you had any drafting partners and how it went in general. Uh, overall, it went pretty well. Uh, you know, in the beginning of the session, me and Westby decided that we were just going to use each other in the draft and uh, I ended up getting down to the 50.3 which put me at top for about half the session but then his motor blew after one flying lap so so uh, that didn't really help that much and uh, after that I just ran solo for the rest of the time and I was able to get down to uh, whatever I did at 50.1 or 2 um, just by myself and uh, you know that was it made me pretty happy but um, you know my Yamaha's run, running really good tonight and uh, you know it seems to be running a lot better during the night than it does during the day so uh, that's good for us, and um, you know I'm definitely looking forward to the race. And I've been sick all week, and I crashed this morning, took a pretty good tumble in my shoulder, and uh, you know just hopefully uh, get lucky tomorrow and don't feel any of it. So, so I'm looking forward to it. Well, that's an excellent job, and make sure you get yourself uh, feeling better. Danny, uh, you and and Martin Card Cardenas had a sensational session. Uh, the two of you. Uh, we're just nose to tail, swapping back and forth, and there was quite a bit of movement on both motorcycles at uh, many points around the circuit. Uh, was that something you guys did in advance, and you just decided to run together? Yeah, it was, you know Daytona's uh, big on drafting here, and um, we kind of talked a little bit before the session, and and wanted to hook up and uh, you know do a little dancing out there, and, and we hooked up, and uh, he gave me some good toes, I gave him some toes, and and uh, you know we came in, put new tires on, and went back out, and and got some good clean laps in. We didn't have any traffic um, through the infield, so we just got really, really lucky with that. And you know, hats off to the Geico Power Sports RMR Suzuki team. I mean, the GSXX, S, GSXR 600 was screaming around the Daytona banking and uh, working really good. But yeah, the bikes were moving around some. Um, but it's all, all good fun. Hey, you know, as you start the session, uh, well, how long does it take for the tires to come in and for you really to get confident on what you're doing? That's what we did when we first went out. Went out on a used tire and um, just kind of got, got used to things. Martin uh, and myself both didn't ride this morning because it was so cold. And, uh, you know, I guess it, it didn't hurt us too bad uh, in the long run. But um, it doesn't take long. Um, tire warmers and everything. So get a good lap in, make sure the tires are scrubbed and uh, uh, hammer down. Tommy, Josh mentioned that you know he felt his engine had a lot of power tonight. Do you think the cooler weather uh, bumps up the power in terms of how you feel the bike? Uh, it depends how cold it is, really. But um, 
right now it's actually real nice conditions for riding, I think. And um, I don't know, it just the Yamaha performs really good in like peak perform peak uh, weather like this. And uh, I don't know, I I did feel like it. My Yamaha was going pretty well by itself because I didn't have a draft or anything, and it was pulling real well down the back straight and all the way on the front straight. So hats off to the Yamaha guys. Well, that's a great session. Anybody have any questions? Anybody? Uh, less traction tonight than it was this morning? No, no. Uh, it definitely had more traction tonight. And, yeah, the people were falling down everywhere this morning. and yeah. <laughs> They got about freezing tonight. Yeah, it was, <laughs> wasn't that great. But tonight was pretty well. It was pretty good. Yeah. Danny, uh, you had a lot of critics last year who uh, said you had an unfair advantage with your motorcycle. What do you want to say to those critics now? I don't know. I guess they'll see whenever they get on Road Racing World or... I look at anything for the Daytona 200. I mean, that's what I've done my whole life is ride motorcycles as hard as I can. And, you know, we did it last year and, and won some races and ended up winning the championship and turn around and put the number one plate on the Suzuki and show up at Daytona and put it on pole so it speaks for itself. Danny, there's an obvious uh, link with Daytona with this team. Um, does that make this poll more special, uh, you know, uh, th thinking about Bruce Rochmeyer? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's a big, big thing and uh, kind of a hard question to answer. I mean, the Rochmeyer family has been big with uh, with our team and being right here in Daytona and it's it's huge. Um, it's huge to be able to do that and yeah, it's, it's, you know, I don't even know what to really say about that. Anybody else here? Technically, uh, do you need to have a drafting partner to post a good lap in qualifying? It always helps. Um, I've been kind of riding around for the most part of the week by myself. Uh, I'm not getting a whole lot of drafting in. Uh, and it, you know, it showed I don't know the exact time. Uh, I wasn't worried about that. I just knew I was at the top, so I wasn't looking at the exact number. But we were you know, low to mid 51s by ourselves. So I think, uh, you know, with being able to draft like that takes takes some time uh, t times off your lap, and it definitely helps around Daytona. Well, I mean, you know, you you want to get a good run out of the infield, climb in the banking, and and get a draft to the chicane. And if you can, uh, you know, work like Martine and I did, and and not get in each other's way in the infield or anything, and. And, you know, you want to get a good run out of the chicane and find somebody that's, uh, you know, a good 10 or 15 bike links up ahead of you and, and try to get a, a good draft around to the tri-ovals, uh, you know, a key, key point here.